structures of the advancing NOAA movement, structures of the A&M. Um, just some of the way the A&M functions. Um, and NOAA had good works. Um, as NOAA hides were to be stewards of creation. We're made of the image of God, and God cares for his creation, so we, we're stewards of creation. And part of work is to care for the environment, to essentially look after Eden, to preserve the animal kingdom, to be involved with food production for mankind, because we need to provide food for our societies, and to be involved with housing production for mankind, because it's usually best to houses, and also to be involved with clothing production for mankind, because it's best to clovers for modesty's reasons and for warmth. There's some of the core want, uh, needs which we need to take care of in the movement, quite obviously. Uh, currently, human society with over 7 billion people in it on Earth is a complex society. It really needs a complex management and administration structure to run efficiently. Uh, God has told me that humanity does not really adhere to the covenant of Noah. Israel has its own covenant. But beyond Israel, other human societies just do their own thing. They're not really based on the covenant, the biblical covenant with God. So it's not a society based on devotion to God and His Torah covenant. So they're just doing their own thing. So we're not completely bound by that. Like Israel, the A&M recognizes that the monetary system is useful enough for commerce. We can also have money and interacting with human societies commerce system is acceptable enough. Most modern societies have sound enough law, but as said, they lack devotion to the covenant and God of the centre. One of the things that A&M on Earth that I'm dedicated to is collecting human societies' knowledge books on laws and customs and other things. Currently, um, in heaven, as I understand from what, what God's told me, Heaven generally, citizens of heaven generally follow the Torah in a general sort of way. Not specifically in the Jewish manner, but in a general sort of way they follow Torah. Most citizens. a and citizens follow a and rules. Advanced and movement citizens in heaven follow the rules and ways and customs of the advanced and movement. Now, a and citizenship... The legal structures were based on, first of all, is the Rainbow Torah, Genesis 1, 1 to 11, 9. Then also, in terms of the, the basic laws which we follow, the Torah of Noah, which is divided into four sections, a thousand rules all up, in four sections, one for HNF, Haven Noah Fellowship, one for AOTGC, Assembly of the Divine Creator, one for UFA, the Universal Faith Assembly, and one for UTA, the Universal Truth Assembly. Each of, the four, of those four DFs with the Torah of Noah create a spiritual bedrock of lawfulness in society. Now of and of course, the Assembly of the Living God is based on primarily just the Rainbow Torah, and the other, the other divine fellowships and um, assemblies of faith have their own sort of structures which they observe in terms of theological teaching and so forth. Now the structure of authority in the advanced Noah is God is at the top, then we have a Desiarchs, which is a ten patriarchs from Adam through to Noah. Then I guess I've placed myself next to the founder of the movement, Daniel Daly, that's me. Then, then the structure I've generally got in mind is chief superintendents for each of the divine fellowships and assemblies of faith. A chief superintendent who runs the whole show. Uh, generational ones are necessary. And then national superintendents. And then a the pastorship is respon um, uh, responsible to answering, accountable to the national superintendents. And there can be hierarchical structures within the pastorship if necessary. Now it's best, uh, this is a new idea I'm working with, that, that each congregation, which is the individual assembly that you're part of in your local area, has a congregational societal reconciliator. Uh, the, in other words, this is this is the idea that each congregation has a spokesperson which liaises to society in general on behalf of the fellowship, and this person is fluent with societal law, customs, and norms, which they've acquired from the knowledge books which I've acquired from the fellowship, and um, they communicate these 
course, people live in the real world, so they know anyway a lot of how, what goes on. But to stay reconciled with society, we have a specific spokesperson who speaks on our behalf, not necessarily the pastor. And in, in, as the congregation gets bigger in size, it's not really meant to be the pastor. It's a, a, a role for someone in the congregation, primarily usually a man, but a woman can do the job if it's appropriate. A congregational societal reconciliator who reconciles us to the world. They need to be schooled in the knowledge and customs of the world. And we need to be able to teach the congregation where we need to conform, if necessary, to get along with the world, to be in harmony with the world, where, when and where we can. So that's the role of congregational societal reconciliator. Now, of course, the whole purpose of the ANM is uh, to create a, a society of lawfulness unto God, where people can live out their dreams and hopes and aspirations of creating a better life for themselves and their family and the society that they're part of. 